Hello everyone, I'm astronaut Mike Mullane. I'm a 1967 graduate of the U.S. Military Academy at West Point. I took my commission in the U.S. Air Force. In 1969, I was flying in the back seat of the F-4 Phantom Jet and completed 134 combat missions in Vietnam. In 1978, I was selected in the first group of space shuttle astronauts and flew three space missions. Welcome to my program, Stopping Normalization of Deviance. Now, the way I want to kick off this program is to bring you along vicariously on a space shuttle launch. So for the next few minutes, I want everybody to suspend disbelief, pretend that we're all fellow astronauts. We're going to fly a mission into space. Eight and a half minutes up, the autopilot shuts off the engines. The gas tank is empty. It was jettisoned to burn up in the atmosphere. All that remained now headed to orbit was the winged vehicle. We call that the orbiter. And now we're on our way to the International Space Station. Now, I wanted to share that narrative with you to set you up for this question. If we had not been pretending, if this had been for real, if all of you truly had been tied to 4 million pounds of propellant, what type of a team would you want out there holding your life in their palm? Clearly, in situations like this, where you work in a hazardous environment, your life is on the line, and by the way, that is an everyday work occurrence for most of you. You're in that regard, you're like astronauts every day taking a flight into space. But in these circumstances, whether it's doing your job or flying into space as an astronaut, it's a hazardous environment and you want a world-class team holding your life in their palm. And teams get to be world-class when every team member is living these are living safety fundamentals. Now, the three that I want to discuss in this program are guarding against a normalization of deviance. To find that term here in just a moment, making certain we take each other's backs and making sure that we count in all circumstances at all times. We count living safety values, and one of which is guarding against a normalization of deviance. Now, what is this? It's repeatedly shortcutting safety best practices until that behavior becomes your new normal. But it's more than that. We drag our humanity to work. We can't leave it at our home. And our basic humanity burdens us with some very significant pressures. We got the pressures of family, the pressure, financial pressures, relationship pressures, health pressures. And all of this can push us into shortcutting safety best practices. To give you an example, Let's say it's a Friday afternoon, you're out doing a hazardous job and you're looking at your watch and you're thinking, man, I, if I can just wrap this up, save some time, I can get home and take the kids to the ball game. So you start thinking, how can I save some time? You put yourself under schedule pressure and you answer that question. Well, I can save some time by skipping some of these procedures. I can save some time by not wearing PPE. Heck, I've, I've worn PPE a thousand times doing this job and have never needed it. I certainly can, can get by without wearing it today. So you take those safety shortcuts. And what the danger here is, normalization of deviance leads to predictable surprises. You get away with a shortcut over and over and over, it becomes your new normal. It leads to predictable surprises and you can just write in your worst nightmare right here. Uh, whatever can occur as your worst nightmare. I'll tell you what it is too. It's injury and it's death when you operate in hazardous environments. Now the Space Shuttle Challenger disaster in 1986, which killed seven astronauts, was a graphic and classic example of what normalization of deviance can do, frankly, to a terrific team, great team, NASA Apollo team. Uh, and it occurred, Challenger occurred because of a four-year shortcutting of safety best practices. So I'm going to tell you the story of Challenger. So that's the story of Challenger. What do we learn from this story that can better perfect, protect us from being victimized by normalization of deviance? The second lesson from Challenger is right here. Risk has no memory. Risk is not being diminished as a function of your success in repeatedly taking a risk. I think we as humans have an incredibly difficult time getting our heads around this. We tend to believe that a risk taken is a risk diminished and it does not work that way. As an example, I'd like to believe that none The last lesson I wanna pass on to you from the story of Challenger is this. Make procedural compliance a religion. The surest way to avoid being victimized by normalization of deviance. Now let's continue with the discussion of this safety value, taking each other's back. I wanna start a conversation on this value by 
taking you to this moment in a launch countdown where you're being strapped into that cockpit. As I said earlier, you're gonna fear for your life while you're out there. People hear that and wonder how you can, how you can accept that fear, how you can go back multiple times, take multiple missions into space. How do you deal with that? And the answer I give is I think the identical answer that every astronaut would give. Let's wrap this up with a discussion of this final safety value, you count. And this is particularly important to practice given the generational change in the workforce that's occurring in a lot of industries that operate in hazardous environments, probably many of your industries.